gonna talk a little bit about our UK Forage Supplement Tool app. Uh, it's an app and a website, so you can access it easily on your phone. And this was a uh, program that was developed uh, several years ago. Um, and what it does is it allows you to take hay test results and just pull four pieces of data off that hay test uh, analysis that you get back. And it gives you a starting point on where to look for, for supplementing our cow herd throughout the winter. So um, it's not a, a perfect tool. It's not a, a ration balancer. There's certainly uh, much more powerful softwares out there uh, where we can put a lot of different factors in and really uh, probably get a little more precise than what this tool can do for us. But this is something that's very user friendly uh, and at least will get you going in the right direction. So. Uh, if you Google UK Forage Supplement Tool, you'll get a website that comes up that looks just like this. And you just go through and put your information in from your hay test, so your dry matter, your crude protein, your NDF, the fiber content, and your TDN or energy uh, values. And then you can select the stage of production that you're interested in looking at. So we've got mid gestation, late gestation, and lactation. And then we've got a bunch of different potential supplements up here. Uh, so we've got everything from corn down to soybean meal uh, and then some different blends of some of those different products uh, as well. And one of the things that you can do, you can either select uh, things that you have available, maybe things that you already have on your operation, or you can hit a select all and just compare all of the results. And then you hit calculate and you get uh, a screen that comes up and it tells you exactly how many pounds of each of those supplements that you've selected to feed your cows. Um, one thing that, that it's doing on here is it is estimating intake uh, and it's assuming a 1,250 pound cow in adequate body condition. So when I, when I talk about this tool with people, I always want to mention if you've got a situation where we've got thin cows and we're trying to put condition back on uh, or if you're looking, you know, we're feeding through the winter and we've got a lot of mud or we run through some of those really cold spells like we have you know that these numbers aren't going to factor in things like mud and and temperature and and wind and they're not going to factor in uh, needing to put on body condition uh, so just remember that when we use this this tool the other thing is is it's really designed to be used with dry hay uh, so i don't recommend using it with with high moisture kind of feeds like corn, like silage or, or haylage or, or any of our baleage kind of products uh, make sure uh, that we're using it with dry hay. If you have one of those situations, uh, you know, that's a, an opportunity to, to get a hold of a nutritionist and we can work through uh, making sure we get you on the right track. Um, but one, of, so like I said, it'll give you all these uh, different values in pounds uh, to supplement. Um, the other thing that's got built into it is some safety nets. So we've put, maxed out some of the levels on here for some of these different products. So we're not going to put you in a situation where where you're feeding to so much corn to your cows, they become acidotic. We've put safety nets in here to, to keep you out of, out of trouble and, and using this tool. Um, so one of the things, uh, this is some, some work I did with, uh, for a group of, of youth that stopped by the research center in Princeton this summer. We actually walked them through an exercise with different potential hay samples using the app uh, and, and had them calculate what um, what each supplement was going to require for those hay uh, samples, and then to really drive the point home for them, I um, I'll do the, this one first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to really drive the the point home, I put this on a on an economic basis and really started to look at the dollars of cent and cents of making sure we get the right supplement with the right hay. So. When we look at the different hay samples I've got up here, some of them have a lot more fiber content, a lot less energy, a lot less protein than others. Uh, so there are some differences across here. And so what I did is I calculated out what it would cost to supplement 100 cows for 30 days uh, in each stage of production with each hay. And I did that for three different uh, feed ingredients and I put on here the prices that I use. So uh, of course distillers is probably a bit higher than that today. Uh, so these numbers might actually be uh, a little bit higher now, but um, based on the numbers here, you can see that, and the point I really try to make with people is that even though dried distillers is the most expensive here in terms of price per ton, 
when we actually look at its ability to meet the nutritional requirements of say these lactating cows down here, it ends up being the most cost effective uh, for meeting the nutritional needs of, the, of that herd versus something like soy holes. And that really gets down to the fact that, that distillers is bringing in more protein to meet that protein requirement of those cows uh, where the, the holes aren't gonna be able to achieve that for us. And so we can see some pretty significant differences in terms of the cost of meeting the nutritional requirements of, these, of the cow herd based on, on which hay sample we're feeding and which supplement we choose. So my, my point is always to make sure we're feeding the right hay to the right animal at the right time uh, with the right supplement to make sure that, that we're being as strategic as we can. Uh, this is... This we, is... We left the wrong poster at home, so I had to hand, this hand write this one before. Kevin, Kevin's drawing for us today. <laughs> but another thing I want to kind of talk about, I talked about some of the nutritional requirements and meeting those requirements. Uh, this is something I always like to kind of leave people with because they're an easy rule of thumb to look at when you start looking at your hay test results. Um, so when we're thinking about crude protein requirements, we call it the 7-9-11 rule. Uh, so for mid gestation down to lactation, that protein requirement increases as her nutritional requirements increase. So it goes from 7, 9, and 11. And then same thing over on energy, 50, 55, and 60. Um, so again, these are just kind of ballpark numbers, but it's certainly a starting point when you get your hay test results back to look at that and say, you know what, that's, that's probably the hay I need to make sure I save for those lactating cows versus this is more of a dry cow hay. You know, using these kinds of numbers will help get you in the ballpark. And then, you know, pairing that with something like a forage supplement tool or a ration balancer if, if you've got a little bit more of a unique situation going on. Um, can really um, help us develop some strategic supplementation programs for the cow herd uh, and make sure that the feed that we're putting out there for them is, is meeting their nutritional requirements uh, and getting the job done for us. So, so that's, can I jump in yep. here? <clears throat> so to give a little history there with the app, I mean, any of you all can Google this uh, UK beef cow forward supplement tool and load it on your phone right now as we're standing here, right? If you got good cell service, you can, you can get that done. One thing, when Katie came into the department two years ago, that was interesting is when she looked at the app and all, and it was her idea, and we had gotten a little bit of the feedback from producers. All but her first response is, let's put, let's add, let's redo this app and add one more element to it about putting prices, like what she did calculated on this uh, poster here where we can put in DDGs at 250 a ton or soy hulls at 210 or corn gluten or whatever the case may be but be able to put a price and then have it not only calculate what you're going to feed but also how many dollars per cow per day maybe to feed a certain supplement and I think that's something we're going to work on to try to add that to the app and, uh, and get that improvement made and I think that's that, it was really good suggestion on her part we got same kind of feedback in our first group this morning mm -hmm. from a producer that you know agreed with the same thing we need to you know because it's really cow dollars feeding dollars per head per day that's what we're trying to do is get them as cheap as possible right and meet their needs so uh, so this is pretty user friendly it's, and, and it's, it's something that anybody can use with a phone you know uh, get a hay test plug it in your phone and then you've got something to go by Yep, and you can certainly calculate out that cost if you've got a price per ton or get that on a price per pound basis for your supplement and just multiply it times the, the pounds that it recommends. It's not, not difficult math, but if we can get the, the app to do it for you, then I think that's, a, that's an even better step to keep you. you know, so y'all don't have to take the time to do it. You just plug in what your prices are and what those units are, and we can, and it, we can get it to do the math, math for you. So. Yep. I'm happy to, to take any questions if y'all have any. So how important is it to, um, to take multiple samples of your hay? Is it better just to take a bunch of random samples and dump it all in one bag and get one analysis, or is it better to do it by lot? Yeah, so when we're taking hay samples, we want to make sure that we're getting by a lot. And when we talk about a lot, um, that's hay that's been harvested off of the same field at the same time. So it's basically, it's been managed in the same conditions. Now, if you took half of a field and some of that went in the barn and some of that went outside, 
those now are, are should be treated as two separate lots. So you want to make sure that you're getting all of the lots tested. Uh, and then within a lot, you can go out with your with the hay sample tool, the hay core tool, and get multiple core samples from different bales within that lot. Uh, I know some of the forage guys will tell you about 20 cores per sample into a, into a plastic bag and then keep each of those separate. Uh, because like I, I, I kind of alluded to, we've got a lot of differences in, in forage quality. Uh, and even if we get it all harvested relatively on time, we can still have differences in forage quality. Uh, so we don't want to make the assumption that all this hay is going to be the same uh, when we get it put up because there certainly can be some differences in terms of, of the fiber content and the energy content uh, where we may actually end up missing the nutritional requirements of the herd and, and start losing condition and, and for, in some cases we don't have a lot of condition to lose. So uh, make sure that we're getting good adequate samples for all the hay that we're going to be potentially feeding throughout the year.